Hello again. Welcome back. Another week of A Photographer Talks. This week, we're off to the land of Mexico to meet a photographer who has been taking photographs since the 90s. His images are both extremely beautiful and at the same time, very calming. To him, he works to the mantra of perspective changes everything in life. And you can see that in his images. Moises Levy is a photographer and an established architect who lives in Mexico City. All of his life, he's been surrounded by images, so much so that he thinks visually and in his own words, lives through his eyes. When studying architecture, he always carried a camera to fulfill his desire of wanting to express himself visually. He realized that photography at this point was his passion and since then has spent many hours searching and waiting for that extremely special moment. They usually come at the most unexpected time and place. Working with all kinds of equipment, he likes to shoot with Sony's, Phase 1's, Alpers, Hasselblad's, Rolleis, and at times even pinhole cameras. For him, the human subject is the main, excuse me, the human condition is the main subject of his photography. Perspective and scale feature heavily in his work, as does intimacy, as you can see from how he goes very close to a lot of his subjects. He believes in being close to his subjects to help create powerful images. He likes to work with backlight to create high contrast black and white and almost graphical types of work. Using very low angles in places with almost no distractions like beaches and open spaces, he creates work that is literally timeless. Please join me in welcoming Moises Levy to your screens. Hello, sir. Hi, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you very much for joining me all the way from, from, from Mexico City. You're my first Mexican city, Mexican guest. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. So tell me, let's start. Um, your, your mantra, perspective changes everything in life. How did you, you come to this phrase? Was this something you've been working to for many, many years? Uh, not not exactly. Uh, I think that uh, this is a phrase that has, a, you know, a two different ways of seeing. You can interpret the the idea in graphic uh, in a graphic way, you know, in like in in a photographic uh, way, or you can interpret the idea also in. A, in your life, you know, in a philosophy, philosophical uh, way. So I think that uh, in my uh, own way to see the my photography, I believe that uh, when you change the point of view of your camera, of your eyes, uh, everything changes. So I discovered this uh, almost 20 years later when I start shooting photography so i was aware that if you change uh, one meter below your eyes uh, everything changes so some photographers doesn't realize that uh, uh, there are there are a lot of uh, points of view uh, that doesn't have to be on the eye level you know of course yeah so I believe that the uh, perspective and point of view is everything in street photography. That's very, that's very well said. It's, it's obviously a mark of your imagery. Uh, a lot yeah. of your pictures, not, not all of them, but a lot of your pictures are from low down. It's kind of almost, almost the animal eye perspective, you know, it's low to the floor and I think that's what's so striking. You don't see a lot of that nowadays. Obviously, a trick of street photography is to go is to go lower down, bend your knees, use your body to zoom, but to go down so low that you look through the spokes of a bicycle wheel 
for example, such as your cycle of life, Palladio, it, it's, it's very different. It's very different. You, um, I, I, believe, I believe that when you go down, you erase everything that you don't want to see from your uh, frame. So it's a very interesting that it, you can focus only in the subject that you want to to shoot and you can erase everything else. And it's very interesting how how the perspective and the and all the you know the all the elements that are getting too many uh, elements to the image mm. disappears so it's it less, very interesting less distraction and only what you yeah. want to see yeah i think that's that's um that's very true that's and then is that what that what pleases you you know you you do you find that the pictures that you shoot at this low angle are your favorites or is it just a style that you've kind of developed and you're still developing? No, I believe that uh, when I realized that uh, if I go down with, with my camera, uh, my image is more uh, um, pure, more minimalistic, and I can focus in a few elements only. Um, and also, my images are more dramatic because I am very close to my subject and I use wide angles. So everything is more dramatic and more focused on my subject. Yeah. 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 You tend, I think with the, the wide angles, obviously you can get more in such as the, the cycle of life um, image. I'll put it on screen. Uh, obviously, another feature that you get with this technique is a lot of depth of field, a lot of yeah. a lot of layers. You know, you can see in this image in particular lots of different tightrope walkers and the beach sp stretching ahead. But you also have a magnificent way of framing. So, in in the cycle of life shot, uh, is a is a classic. Uh, image where you've used the the bicycle wheel to frame but also another shot we'll look at in a while where you have framed a footballer between the legs um, on the beach so you're using a, a classic technique and it, it, it's very it's very arresting when you are lying uh, when you're in these positions you know when you're down low do do people approach you and ask you what you're doing or why are you so low down? Yeah. It's very strange to look at me working in, at the at the beach or something in some places that I like to shoot because I am very very uh, fast. You know, I, I I work very fast and I run from one place to another place. When I see something that uh, is interesting, I just run and then run again. So people see me and doesn't uh, understand what what is happening. So, uh, you know, uh, my camera, I don't have my camera on my head. I have my camera on the floor with my uh, tilt uh, screen. So the people doesn't realize that I am shooting photography. They, they, they think that I am making some kind of a experiment. So it's very interesting because they don't uh, get, uh, you know, uh, they don't sh uh, get shy with my camera and I, I can work more uh, freely. So it's interesting how how my setup is it's not so invasive, you know. Yes. So you've you have automatically created a disconnect. Uh, always a always a, a classic technique with the look down, 
from you know, almost like sort of uh, Vivian Meyer, the most recently yes, discovered artist. like a Rolex flex. Precisely. Uh, but you're taking it one one step further by going floor level uh, at the same time. Yeah, Have you... I, I, I enjoy a lot when I uh, work with my Rolex flex because, you know, it's more... Uh, the people doesn't uh, doesn't how how can I explain because you know English is not my first language so sorry if well. I <laughs> uh, people doesn't uh, uh, realize that you are shooting so everything is more freely. Yes, yes, you yeah. you, you don't have the the pressure of someone stopping you or commenting necessarily so do you do you find that because you have that disconnect of looking down and going low that people may look at you strangely but not really comment do you ever get people coming up to you asking what's going on or even getting angry with you taking pictures both both of them let me let me talk about uh, some stories about this. Okay. Uh, when I was an, it, in Santa Monica shooting, in, you know, in the all this kind of stuff with people making uh, all kind of gym uh, activities, I was on the floor looking for someone someone that was uh, uh, hanging, making you know uh, exercise. Yes. Yeah. And I, I look at, at her feet and I create, you know, a layer a image with, uh, with her feet on the first plane. But he doesn't realize that I was shooting her feet. So he was making the ex exercise. And when he goes to the floor, he saw me in her, uh, you know, <laughs> near her foot. So he told me, what are you looking, doing here? What the hell are you doing, <laughs> doing here? So he uh, was uh, upset because I was very close to, to him, but he doesn't understand that I was shooting. So yes. my, my activity was more, uh, more uh, natural. So this is one story. Another story was that when I was walking at the beach, I saw two bicycles on the be on the floor, and I start shooting at the floor with the uh, wheels in the first uh, uh, plane, and a couple of people was cu curious about what I was doing with the with the bikes. So when they saw on my screen what kind of a uh, image I was uh, shooting, they was they, they were uh, amazing how uh, uh, you know uh, an, an common bike can create a different image with this kind of approach. Perspective changes everything. Right. Yeah. It's that's I, I can understand. It's quite imaginable that you would have, have those situations um, you know, lying on the ground and, and taking photographs but not looking like you're taking photographs definitely would make people wonder what on earth you're doing. So you, you say you went to Santa Monica, that's where you shot the cycle of life shots and levitation that you yeah. shared with me. Uh, levitation, do you think the people in the background were taking a picture of you, taking a picture of this man? Or was it, they were they no, more interested of, in him? Definitely, they were taking the people, the picture of the man. The man was the, the subject in, in that moment. Uh, I, I was very, I was a, uh, like a second, you were the second, second layer, player. yes, and and I I wasn't any in any interest for for them, 
So all of, of us, including me, uh, was shooting the men, not, not, not ev everything else. Oh. So that was a very complicated um, picture because I was trying to everything get into the place, you know? Mm. The man was uh, trying to get st uh, in st stabilization, so he was uh, moving a lot, and the bikes were uh, going up uh, on on the on the uh, path. Uh -huh. So everything was changing so fast. So I tried to capture, uh, you know, the moment when everything gets uh, in the place so it was a very complicated uh, and very fast uh, picture because i i run when i i saw the men trying to stabilize stabilize in the in the line i run to try to capture uh, that picture and everything happens so fast so maybe fast. Uh, when I saw the, pic the the man in the line and I take the picture, maybe I, it took 40 seconds. Okay, okay. So, so when, you, when you're in this situation and, and the other image say cycle of life, are you a person that composes and waits and takes a, a single shot? Or are you more shoot a lot and then pick the the favorite image. You know, street photographers tend to be kind of one side of that. What's your approach? I shoot a lot. I shoot uh, maybe three thousand uh, frames in two hours, or maybe four thousand uh, uh, frames in two hours, and I select a, a maybe four or five. Uh, image from the from 4000 so i am very selective when i uh, uh, choose my work but uh, i am very patient I, I i i wait a lot of time to uh, for an, an an opportunity to have a, a different kind of a picture so I shoot a lot, but when I I am um, sure that this kind of a uh, uh, you know scenery will give me something special, so I wait a lot to find something, and when I find that kind of a, a, a situation, I shoot a lot to have different kind of uh, situations in the same uh, place right yes yes so you you select your spot and you wait and you shoot and you shoot right. and you shoot and yes. some some I, magic will happen some Moises yeah. magic how yeah. you said that maybe in two hours you shoot four thousand pictures what is the the length of time that you would normally go out do you go for days, you know, full day, or is it always more a kind no. of quick burst of inspiration? Uh, I shoot, uh, nor usually I shoot uh, two hours before sunset because it's the best light for the kind of picture that, that I work, work. And sometimes in the fisherman, uh, work i shoot maybe two hours from sunset after the sunset so not usually i shoot very early and almost at sunset okay but only ever for a, a short short period yeah and uh I, I, you say you get maybe four four or five pictures how long um, how long have you been working in that approach because I'd imagine 20 years ago when you were shooting with film you had a slightly different method yeah 
I, I am I, I have been shooting street photography maybe from seven years ago. Okay, only seven. Okay. Yeah, only seven, maybe six years ago. Because uh, before this, I was, uh, you know, more uh, on landscape and more on still life photography. Yes. Then uh, uh, when I was shooting uh, landscape, I realized that my work was waiting for something more, you know, more human, more life. So human I element. start, yeah, I start shooting with all my uh, background of landscapes, all my no knowledge of landscape photography, and I apply the contrast and the backlight from my landscape photography to street photography, but using the man as the center of my images. I see. So then you started. What was it? What was it that gave you that or, or, or was the switch, shall we say, what flicked the switch in you to start to shoot street? Did you discover a particular photographer that you liked? Let me tell you, I, I started shooting street photography maybe 30, 40 years ago. When I start shooting photography, I start on the streets. When I travel to New York, you know, Europe, uh, every town in Mexico, I, I try to capture the streets. But I, it was very, very hard for me to shoot the streets because, you know, a street is a very complex place to shoot. Mm. You can find everything and it's very difficult to start shooting streets if you don't have any experience in photography because you can be overwhelmed with, with all the elements that you see. So I focus more on landscape that is more easy, more control. And I was very happy shooting um, landscapes because it's very relaxing, very rewarding to shoot and have very beautiful images. But with the, with the time, I realized that uh, I, I was looking for something else, something more powerful. And I start uh, looking for some photographers, you know, uh, Cartier-Bresson and Vivian Meyer. And I was amazed how powerful one image could be. Yes. And I tried to to work on streets and I realized that all my landscapes photography that I, I liked the most was in black and white and in backlight. So I I was um, I tried to go to places where where I I, I can find the backlight and the people in the first plane. And then I realized with some Cuban photographers like Raul Canivano and some others that plays a lot with uh, layers. So I, I try to combine the backlight, the human uh, and the layers in one in one image and that's what I'm doing now. So I, I believe that all my background like in landscapes and like an architect with the perspective eye, you know, a geometry uh, eye, uh, I believe that everything helps me to create something that uh, gives my image more powerful, you know. Uh, yes a gra graphic perspective, uh, backlight, everything combined and gives, you know, a powerful image. Exactly. Yeah, yeah very much. And I, I think your the image I alluded to, Trapped, uh, which is on screen now, is, is a perfect example of that. You have 
well, first of all, it's black and white. It's on the beach, so you have the layers of the ocean uh, rolling in, looking through the the legs of um, a, a young man that frame another man uh, who's a few meters away, and then you see another person in the ocean. This is a perfect example, exactly of what you've just described. B- a beautiful image, and that's a big trait of yours. So you can see that you've developed the the true sort of levy style, shall we say, from from sort of an understanding over over a long period of time. But not, I mean, not all of your images are like that. Obviously, sort of more recently. Well, not recently, but there's a lot of work that you do on the beach, which is not related to people, but is more about, I, I think, your your muse, really. And your muse, I think, I think of slightly as the heron, because this is almost, almost an angelic element of your work that that we see um these pictures that you shoot on the beach with the herons is this close to where you live not not uh, very close it's in acapulco in mexico it's about uh, three four hours drive from okay mexico city it's a it's not a beach it's a lake near the beach ah it's a lake near the beach. It's a near, uh, uh, a lake in a uh, fisherman town. So I was maybe 10 years ago, 12 years ago, looking for some spots in the lake for landscape photography, you know, uh, yeah. some houses, fisherman houses inside the lake. And I was looking for that kind of stuff. And then I realized that uh, uh, Fisherman Town was near there. And I, I wake up at, uh, and one day, very early, maybe 5 a.m., and go to the Fisherman Town to see how the fisherman lives and all that. Because I believe that is very, very interesting. And I realized that the, the Hurons was the, the key element, you know, between the lake and the fishermen. Because the Hurons go there to have a breakfast when they came from all, all night uh, doing her jobs mm. uh, with, uh, you know, uh, fishing. So... I, I, I believe that heroes are, you know, the, the transition between the landscape and the street photography in the town. So I believe that uh, it was a very pleasant uh, subject to shoot street photography in a landscape way. So uh, I return very, very uh, often to that place. Yeah. And I have a very uh, nice uh, moments because uh, you know I, I I go there almost at night and I see how the the sun rise and how the herons start the day how the fisherman comes from all all night fishing and it's like a, a very special moment how the the world wakes in a yeah. different way it, yes uh, it is um there's something kind of calming actually and you could see that you've married the the best of those worlds you've kind of connected almost i feel with the herons i think sometimes when you look at your pictures you feel that they know you're there and almost they're sort of reacting or, or playing for you in, in some of them. I mean, how many times would you say you, you've been there over the years? I have been there uh, from 
10 years ago, maybe 20, 20 times. Okay. And okay. maybe all, all, almost all the fishermen uh, knows me. They, they are very kind with me. They have very, uh, so much fun with me because they, they have, a, you know, when they see me working, they are very curious about my camera and what I'm doing. So it's a very uh, interesting, interactive uh, way of work with them. I was last week there and I have a very strange thing happens with to me because uh, lately uh, I am getting more and more uh, inside the, the lake to shoot the action, you know, very close to the heroes. Yeah. Uh, Ten years ago, I only shoot from from the land, you know. I, I never wet myself to, to shoot. But I realized that if I don't go too close, my image is not powerful enough. So I, I start getting inside the water with my camera. Uh, and last week when I was there, I was with my hat and I was, you know, in a, a position to look to my camera from below, from, you know, from upside. And one heron uh, thought that I was supposed to uh, uh, something not human. And he, the, the heron stand on me. <laughs> They are very, very afraid of human because humans sometimes, uh, you know, uh, catch them and they, they are don't they don't trust humans. But uh, w when the heron stand on my heart, they don't uh, 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 realize that I was a human. And when I move, because I was afraid of what happening. Uh, the heron was very afraid also. So it was a strange moment to see me afraid and the heron afraid. <laughs> and all the fishermen was uh, uh, very, very uh, 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 smiling. Yeah. But, but what is happening? Amused. <laughs> do, do, you, do you not think for a small moment that actually the herons have become so comfortable with you that they came and sat on your head? Or do you think that will never happen? No, never. No? No. <laughs> because a lot of your images obviously are beautiful and they show such... Well, it feels like you have a connection. I've said it already. Every day, the way you, you've said you've got closer and closer over time, it makes you think maybe, maybe they will, will one day start to recognize. No, recognize I don't think you. so. They are, they are very afraid of humans. Okay. So, uh, I believe my secret is to be very patient. I go in a very slow um, way and I wait for the moment to, to create something special. But I try to not, not to move uh, almost at all because if I move, they don't, uh, they go away. So if you can see, uh, I like to have the water very clear. Yes. Without, without, without motion. So uh, if I walk in the water, the water doesn't looks very clear so i need to be very um, still still to let the water uh, you know um, go like glass exactly and the uh, herons uh, come to me so it is a very very 
delicate uh, uh, work. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Well, I'll put the I'll put the picture up, um, which possibly relates to that story that you that you put on um, on your Instagram feed from last week. This one's color. Um, yeah, I was I was uh, I was going to show this later, but actually it fits. Um, I mean, this is one. This is a wonderful picture that clearly illustrates the marriage of exactly everything that you've just said. You're using the herons, the reflective element of the water, the the what I assume is a fisherman in the background, and uh, this was this is one of your. I think it's your most successful picture um, on on social media for for some reason. Uh, why did you choose to go with um with color out of interest you know obviously we've talked about everything in black and white we've seen a slow a slight progression of color in some of your imagery um and uh in in recent times uh you've been putting some questions out to your community do you prefer color or black and white are you starting to realize a love of color or, or, or is, Let, um, is something yeah, else? It's, is something else happening? I, I, I will make a statement here. Uh, <laughs> when I was when I was uh, starting the lockdown in Mexico, maybe six eight months ago, uh, I start painting. Ah, I start okay. painting watercolor, and I am in love with uh, the painting. So I was aware that. Uh, in the world, the colors exist also. So I was um, very passionate about how the cool colors works against the warm colors, you know, all the color theory. Yes. And it was a very, um, a great discovery for me to find the colors in a different way because I believe that the photography, color photography, it could be sometimes very overwhelmed. You know, it's very, sometimes it's too busy, too, too many elements. So I prefer sometimes the black and white because it's more clear, more powerful. But when I find that I can have color image with only a few colors, uh, sometimes the message is also powerful and is not overwhelmed with a lot of colors. Mm. So I discovered that uh, all my uh, heroes' uh, images have only two colors, uh, the blue and the orange. You know, only one cool and one warm color. Yes. And they give the... Uh, the picture some extra information and it's not overwhelmed with a lot of information of colors so i believe that some uh, pictures works better in color and some others works better in black and white so i believe that it's a progression of my work and it's not that i am uh, taking black and white away of, of, from my eyes. No, no, it's just, it's interesting to hear. I think if you look at the, uh, the image again that I just put up, the colors in the picture are mostly, mostly blue and then the white of the herons and just that little uh, glint of sort of red of the fisherman's t-shirt in the middle adds a certain warmth which is quite interesting, you know. You have obviously the the, the sort of sunset color coming through the birds, um, the bird, the heron's wings, but but the 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 picture in blue effectively should be cool, you know, kind of almost give the viewer a sense of sense of cool and and um, from a temperature perspective. But actually, it's a very warming image, and I, I, there's possibly something to be said in that with the bringing through of the the other color that you mentioned the golden and uh 
in this instance, yes, it, it does work, I think. However, your, um, your black and whites have such depth in your in the conversion and whatever your the Moses magic is um, that it's it is actually quite difficult to choose I've seen some of your pictures where you show the color and the black and white and both of them have equal beauty which I think says a lot for the photograph and and your quality of imagery as a whole um, uh, obviously the subjects are, are extremely beautiful and the locations that you go to as well but there's the simplicity behind it that I think carries your work the picture going back to going back to the fisherman uh, it's uh, the shot here of the fisherman casting his lines uh, this does do the fishermen you say you've got to know them do the fishermen um have anything to do uh, with the shots do they ask you to shoot certain things or do they just let you kind of carry on um, as you wish okay let let me talk a lot uh, something about the colors before ask you as uh, answer course, your question do. when i select my images uh, i always compare my uh, black and white and mark and my color version and I only choose my color version when the there is something extra to transmit to tell that the black and white doesn't have so for me it's very important to I always choose black and white but still look to my color image and look if there is something that my black and white left or uh, you know uh, is uh, missing uh, from the color version so yeah if i choose the color is because there is something special and something that the black and white uh, doesn't have so it's very it's very interesting sometimes i i don't i don't know what to choose and that that's why when i post both of of, uh, of them <laughs> you take take the easy way out yeah but uh, uh, i i work a lot uh, of uh, analog uh, process of my on my lab uh, you know a uh, platinum palladium uh, I, 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 I love to work in my uh, lab to create a beautiful uh, black and white image. So black and white is, is a, very special for me. Uh, but I cannot, uh, you know, uh, leave the color version because sometimes in, in social media, the color versions has something special that that uh, mm. can give a, a different message. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Go again with your question, please. The th uh, thank you for explaining that. In fact, I have another question related to it. Just briefly, have you thought about going um, and shooting uh, with plates and shooting in plate photography? You know what do you the mean old, with so old, um, old style uh, plates with um, chemicals and uh, that you okay. only have one exposure. So yeah, effectively big old plate photography. Bit difficult. You can't move around quickly. But I feel that some of your imagery would be pretty astounding if you shot in that style. And you say you already do work in the lab. So have you thought about going back, you know, you do pinhole photography, thought about going back even further with the photographic technology? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 love, I love the analog photography. I love to shoot with rolling flakes, with pinholes. I love to develop my own films. Uh, but in my 
recent work of uh, street photography, the Hurons, everything is so fast that I, I don't have time to to change my film. And I shoot too many uh, frames. So uh, I only use my uh, film photography for, you know, for... Uh, maybe still life, maybe street photography with a more uh, uh, slow speed. Yes, yes. And, but uh, with my recent work, but that is too fast, everything is too fast, it's impossible to shoot with a film camera. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah, yeah makes sense. I, I, I just wonder because it felt like this would be a natural thing in a way for you to go to something like wet plates, but obviously the subjects make it make it slightly difficult. Um, yeah. So I was referring but, to that. Let, let, let me tell you that when I uh, work in my lab, I use an hybrid technology. I use digital capture, then I make a digital negative. And from the digital negative, I go to the lab and create the all the 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 plates. The yeah, the plates. So I use the hybrid uh, system. I see. Okay. And how much? Uh, how many times do you print then? How many? How many pieces would you print in a in a month or a year? It, may, it, it depends of the ex exhibitions. Last year, I was printing maybe four or five plates a, a week. Okay. Uh, uh, but it's very interesting because I use my digital files, convert them to, to the, uh, a, a big negative, and from there, I go to the lab. I see. Okay. That's, wow, impressive impressive work so the the fishermen to go back to them as I, I mentioned the fishermen um when you're there do they work with you do they uh, engage and ask you to take imagery of yourself or are you working um purely on your own and and, and appearing behind them as they throw their throw their lines yeah i try to don't interact with them when i'm shooting because I want to create a so very natural uh, scenario. And, and when I when I finish working, I talk with them. But okay. I don't want to talk with them when I'm uh, shooting because I, I want to to them to do their jobs natural. So when when I start uh, talking with them, I believe that they are not in a natural mood. So I, I prefer to, to be more quiet, mm. shoot, and then talk with them when I finish. Yeah. And do they, do they ever want any of your images? Do you share some of them with them? Yeah, yeah. They, they love, they, at the beginning, they, they thought that I was from any newspaper okay. and they asked me if I can post something to the government to to give them, uh, you know, more uh, services and yeah. everything. But I I talk with them and I they realize that I am only making art, so are, they are more uh, easy with me. They are not uh, <laughs> ask me for something. That's good. Yeah, that's that's a good it's a good way to have a relationship with your with your subjects, especially if you go there reasonably often, which it, it seems you do. Yeah. What um what do you think is your favorite location to work? Because we've discussed Santa Monica. There's some imagery of yours from sort of New York. You go to the lake uh, in um, Acapulco, and there's the beach in Mexico City. Do you have a favorite spot? Let me tell you that when I returned to the lake to to shoot um, the Hurons and the fishermen, every day I I 
tell myself this is the last time I come here because I sometimes I believe that I had shoot everything I can shoot there. But when I return, I always find something new, something interesting. And it's very interesting how my wife tell me, are you going to be there tomorrow again? You have everything from there. And every time I go, I go there, I have something special. So it's very interesting how, how you can go and go and go to the same place and every time you have something different. Yes. So my favorite place maybe could be any beach, any beach with a lot of people, with a lot of action, because I like to shoot layers and action. And, you know, when I go to the beach and there are few people, I cannot compose my my images. Mm. So. I, I, I prefer to go to Santa Monica where, you know, the people are doing some jobs and, you know, yeah. and sometimes uh, I, I have a fine uh, football academy on the beach where uh, children are, you know, playing and I can compose with, with them in different layers and in action. So I prefer to go to places with a very clean backgrounds, yeah. like beach, like um, lake. There are my favorite places. Other places. I I, Carry I, 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 um, I like to think like the sky is my white paper when I can do my job. So it has to be has to be a good clean background, I think, for a lot of your photography. Yeah. Would you agree? Yes. That, that's what I what I look for. Are there any places that you haven't photographed near or far that you would like to go to or you will go to? Yeah, I would like to go to India because uh, yes. I believe that uh, the uh, people are very, very easy to shoot. I have been in some places that is very difficult to shoot the people because people are afraid of you. And sometimes uh, you have difficult to see problems with the people when, when you shoot them. So I, I like to shoot in a very easy way when the people is not afraid of you. And sometimes when I was the first times in Santa Monica, when people uh, uh, be aware of my camera, they, they are sometimes uh, they are, you know, afraid of me. Mm. So when, when people, uh, doesn't realize that I am shooting and, and when they realize that I am shooting and they they are not afraid of me, I shoot more freely. Yes, I think that's that's quite a natural uh, a natural thing to have uh, as a photographer, but it makes it makes a lot of sense. Do you, do you tend to shoot mostly now with the cameras as you look down? Yeah, because that releases you, as we said before, that creates the disconnect between you and your subjects. So that that helps. Yes, and and I am very very. Uh, I like to move a lot, so people mm. doesn't get, uh, you know, uh, uncomfortable with me. If I see that the people is not comfortable, I go away. Yeah, that's that's a good tip, a good tip for, yeah. for Moses. Um, so tell me, what uh, what's your sort of favorite? Uh, what's your favorite tip 
would you say for photographers to try and capture imagery like like yourself? My favorite tip is uh, shoot freely. Uh, shoot uh, when people is not uh, afraid of you and try to compose in in a, in a you know a, with layers in a different in, with the same subject in different scales you know have you a you talk about my have you seen my my bicycles um, shoots with one big wheel and some other uh, bicycles yes. on the on the background so i, I don't I have it to that, show but i do yeah yeah it's very interesting when you uh, compose with some subjects in different scales so Trapped it's, is uh, a good example, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's very interesting if you shoot a same a scenery in different perspectives. I believe that you can create powerful pictures that way. Yeah, thank you. That's. I think I think we definitely can all agree with that. I think there's one other thing I would add in though, which uh, I feel is definitely a trait of Moises. Uh, although it's funny because it slightly juxtaposes with what you've said, uh, but is patience. Yeah, because patience you, is very, very, they pay a lot. You patience talk about a it a lot in um, a lot of your work or you can see it in a lot of your work. Uh, but it's funny how you say, in Santa Monica, you're bang, 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 you know, bouncing around. But then obviously we see the picture of, uh, that you posted a few days ago of the man with the birds and the, and the red top. And here is another a mark tip, of patience. Yeah, another tip is uh, try to create stories in your pictures, a, a story a, in different, um, with different elements that create a whole story. You can capture the Hebron, but when a fisherman or a boat is in the background, you create a whole story. So try to capture different elements that tell the whole story. Like the lady, was it the lady catching a fish in one of your pictures? Yeah. Find that post, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So one last uh, one last question I think I'd like to pose to you is you published a book um, a little while ago. Yeah. Do you have any plans to publish any more? Yeah, I have another uh, book on the way for the Santa Monica and the football series at the beach that is called Balance. Balance. Oh, excellent. And when can we expect this? Maybe in five, six months. Okay. Will you be COVID um, accepting? Will you be going back to Santa Monica soon? Or, or have you got enough content, enough images already? No, no. I, I believe Santa Monica is a very, very rich place to capture. I'm, I am waiting for the lockdown to to release, you know, that I can travel more with more safety and go to Santa Monica. Santa Monica is my first stop. Okay. My next stop. Your next stop, your first stop and your next stop. Yeah. That's where you're, that's where you're going to head to. Nice. Well, in that case, let's hope for you uh, and for all of us that the COVID restrictions lift and we can all travel sensibly and sustainably again soon. Because if it's yeah. going to create more amazing Moses photo photography, then I for one am definitely keen to see it. Thank you. Well, I think that's where, where we'll leave it for today. 
we've we've talked for an hour but incredibly as as always the time flies um, right. i'm going to leave i'm going to leave us with a, a little picture just before i say goodbye which you entitled chapuzon which i just wanted to put up we haven't managed to discuss it but i think this is a great a great example of of your work again slightly different but this one you can see that you were right up there right with your subjects i'm sure i almost camera, lose my camera i was scared to say i'm sure the camera was very wet at the end of it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some Why is this? <laughs> not yeah not good for cameras <laughs> Moses yeah. thank you so much for joining me thank you thank you thank you it's been it's been a true pleasure and I very much look forward to seeing more of your work appear over social media um, as time passes thank you thank you for this space take care and we we'll hope to speak to you again very soon thank you Fantastic work from Moises there. A, a real privilege for me to have the opportunity to speak with him directly all the way from Mexico City. His work is superb. And if you haven't seen it, do go have a look through his website and his Instagram. Look out for that new book. I most certainly will be doing myself. And uh, in the meantime, take good care of yourself. Tune in again. And before too soon, hopefully, we'll, we'll be able to see some of Moises' images for sale through the photographertalks.com portal. All the best for now, and until next time.